present us uh, the, the project, uh, a project uh, from uh, University of Florence uh, about the, the migration uh, or the, 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 the a, ma a mapping of uh, the migration uh, from fascist theory of intellectuals. Uh, it's a very important and interesting project, and uh, so we have the work of Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you for the invitation to this conference. Today, we would like to present this uh, project on the website. Uh, the research project uh, is Intellectuals Displaced from Fascist Italy and the grants and sites of refugees fleeing from for political and national uh, reasons. Uh, the project is directed by Patrizia Guarnieri and it was launched in 2019 as part of the University of Florence Memorial Day initiatives. Uh, the results of this work in progress are published in this bilingual, uh, bilingual open access portal, Intellectuali Fuga dall'Italia fascista, intellectuals displaced from fascist Italy, uh, Florence University Press. The project aims at studying the phenomenon of brain drain, both incoming and above all outgoing, which occurred in Italy during fascism and which had significant consequences, not only for the protagonists and their families, but also for the entire uh, country. Reconstructing the paths of the intellectuals who left the country because of the dictatorship and anti-Semitic legislation, the website intends to bring to light the qualitative and quantitative importance of this phenomenon, uh, which has been underestimated until now and represented only through a few exemplary cases of brilliant scientists and scholars such as Enrico Fermi or Arnaldo Monigliano. This is our alphabetical list, which is in progress. First of all, it was a question of identifying these intellectuals. Both Italians, who were expatriated, and foreigners, who had settled in Italy, mainly to escape anti-Jewish anti persecution in the Reich and Eastern Europe, and who, after 1938, were forced to leave their precarious shelters. Making use of uh, as yet unexploited sources, mainly from non-Italian archives, the project focuses not only on, on full professors, there were students, uh, recent graduates, liberi docenti, who had lost their university teaching qualification, Professionals who had been struck off the register of the fascist trade unions and were therefore unable to work. A result achieved is therefore to bring out the submerged phenomenon of all qualified scholars with disciplinary and professional backgrounds who left alone or more often with their families. The pages dedicated to each personal profile uh, include uh, an original scientific article which reconstructs the biographical events with particular attention to mobility, a timeline highlighting the stages uh, to which these lives on the move unfolded, this is the timeline, a map uh, that renders the, the spatial dimension, uh, entries relating to immigrant family members, um, one moment here, Con connected lives, and aid organization, uh, informal aid, support networks, 
and uh, also the references provided in the application submit, submitted uh, to this organization, to the main aid organization. The photographic session, section has rapidly evolved. This is Bruno Rossi. Uh, to constitute an exceptional collection of hundreds of unpublished sources that have been gathered mainly thanks to contacts with heirs often living abroad. Particular attention is therefore paid to the mechanism of emigration, including the decision to leave, the procedures for expatriation, the relations with organization or informal networks that work to obtain permits and find initial accommodation. Another important issue concerns stabilization after immigration. Reconstructing the stages of each individual life on the move has made it possible to highlight much less linear dynamics than what emerged from historiography, from the available uh, biographies, and even from, uh, from memo memoirs. All these sources are often unwilling to insist on difficulties, on temporary career downgrades, or on phases of precarious uh, work. These paths proved more difficult for young people, for scholars at the beginning of their uh, careers, or for those who could not count on a solid international CV. Difficulties were generally greater for women, who were more precarious, less visible, and more conditioned by family choices. In fact, a female, a female presence in intellectual immigration has emerged. So, as you can see in the alphabet police, there are, there's more or less 22% uh, of women. And this percent is much higher than the figures shown in the available studies and even in the general history or histories of intellectuals in Italy. Another objective of this project is to develop a theoretical framework that facilitates the adaptation of social network analysis methods to this database. As, uh, I wish I'd like to show you a, a chart. This is sure. Osimo migratory phenomena, a key role was played by family and professional networks. A graphic representation tool allows the visualization of family connections in order to link individual biography, biographies to collective scenarios. The, carto uh, the cartographic analysis will help, for example, to reconstruct the migration chains and to highlight how personal and family social resources influenced the choice to emigrate and the following paths. The biographies cover a wide range of disciplines. In addition to medicine, biology, and physics, there is a significant presence in the fields of comparative uh, literature, antiquities, music, and uh, visual arts. A first important group is that of doctors, uh, physicians, uh, both Italian and foreign professionals, since a significant percentage of the students who emigrated from Germany <coughs> and Eastern Europe enrolled in the faculties of medicine in Italy. Several of these scholars specialized in psychiatry in the USA and some pursued theoretical and practical paths in the fields of psychology and psychoanalysis. An interesting case study is that of Cesare Lombroso, son of Ugo and grandson of uh, the famous anthropologist, <laughs> positivist anthropologist Cesare Lombroso. Cesare, the grandson,
Cesare tried to return to teaching in Genoa after 1945, but was unable to find a stable position. While he became in Boston one of the most important international scholars in the field of child neurology. One of the most important figures was live on the moon, has been uh, traced by Roberta Passione, is that of Siva Marietti. Barely six months after graduating, the young man left Italy. Uh, in January of 1939, after a brief stay in Switzerland and England, he arrived in New York in April. Here, despite the many hardships linked to his immigration status, he would succeed uh, at establishing his, himself as one of the most important psychiatrists of the 20th century. On the one hand, his path shows all the difficulties common to various immigrant scholars in the first long years, starting with the language issues and ending with the need to find new grants and funding every year. On the other hand, Rieti's biography highlights the importance of specialist networks, of family and social resources, and of formal and informal pay relations. In May 1940, uh, 1940 Silvana Rieti left the New York Psychiatric Institute for a few months to go to Yale, to the private uh, biology laboratories, a research center directed by Robert Yerkes. Yerkes, who had been president of the APA, uh, was a leading scholar in functional psychology. In, in, in 1909, he had introduced Ivan Pavlov's work in the United States, giving momentum to a new season of experimental behavioral studies. It was the help, the help of Bayerts, who had been impressed by the skills of this young man, that enabled uh, Sivan to take up an internship at Pilgrim State Hospital, the largest psychiatric hospital in the world. And in, in this hospital, his linguistic handicap did not have much importance, first and foremost, because here the inmates were not paying, paying guests, and then, because his humble job was essentially that of surveying the patients in the words, a task for which speaking didn't count. He would remain at Pilgrim Hospital until, uh, until 1946, five long and hard years, but also, unexpectedly, so rich from the, from the scientific and human point of view, after leaving Pilgrim Hospital, Arietti decided to devote himself to psychoanalysis, a field in which he had only self-taught knowledge. Since the New York Psychoanalytic Institute declined his application to be admitted as a student, he turned to the William Hanson White Institute, the headquarters of a non-orthodox uh, psychoanalysis, but rather oriented towards a cultural and interpersonal approach, following the path marked by Eric Fromm and Harry Stack Sullivan. During the four years passed, passed at the Institute, he had the, the opportunity to meet Frida from Reichmann, who had also escaped from Europe because of Nazism, and to develop a different and more complex view on the subject of schizophrenia which would lead him in 1945 to write Interpretation of Schizophrenia, a book that was an immediate, an immediate success. Quoting Roberta Passione, Interpretation of Schizophrenia is not only an American work, an Americanness that was consecrated in its second edition by the winning of the National Book Award, it is also an original eclectic work that stood up in an unusual and innovative way in the America of those years, opening never before seen paths to psychiatric reflection. Arietti's stories story also provides an opportunity to reflect on the returns, at least temporary returns, of these scholars to Italy, and on the work of dissemination, updating, and modernization uh, that the intellectuals who emigrated during fashions carried out after 1945. The cases of Enzo Bonaventura, 
and Renata Calabresi. Reconstructed by Patrizia Guarnieri, offer an, inter an interesting insight into the vicissitudes of psychology in Italy from the liberal age to fascism, when the discipline was progressively marginalized. Both, both Enzo and Renata had been pupils of Francesco De Sarlo, founder of the Psychology Laboratory in Florence. This is the Sarlo. And in 1905, uh, and protagonist of a bitter controversy with Benedetto Croce and Giovanni Gentile on the status of the, of, um, the discipline. Bonaventura emigrated with his family to mandatory Palestine, where he managed to find a stable position at the university after much difficulty. However, his attempt to return to Italy failed because Bonaventura had been housed from the academic equilibrium that was re-established after 1945. Renata Calabres' case tells us of the difficulties a, a woman, moreover belonging to an anti-fascist family, had in making her way in academic psychology during the fascist period. Once in the USA, she applied to the Emergency Committee in aid of displaced foreign scholars, but received only limited help as a young woman without strong academic background. Her biography documents all the stages of her career. She was involved uh, by Nino Levy, here, uh, another anti-fascist and Jewish in grade, in a project on German delinquency sponsored by the New School of Social Research, and then had positions at Brooklyn State Hospital, at New York Hunter College, at the Department of Family and Child Welfare in White Plains, at the New Jersey Veteran, Veterans Administration, and finally at the Department of Clinical and uh, Abnormal Psychology at the APA. Lastly, I would like to dwell on some biographies that I consider emblematic in the construction of interdisciplinary skills, of new research possibilities that are closely linked to the dimension of immigration, of mediation between cultures, of self-reflection uh, self on the experiences of adaptation in new social and academic contexts. The poet, writer, um, okay. Play writer Leo Ferrero was the son of the internationally renowned writer Guglielmo Ferrero and also the grandson of his, on his mother's side of Cesare Lombroso. After a degree in art history, he immigrated to Paris, London, and then to the United States. Quoting Leila Zenderland, in 1931, Leo's life took a surprising, a surprising turn when he learned, that, learned about a new fellowship opportunity. The Rockefeller Foundation was seeking an Italian candidate to join, to join to join a unique American educational experiment called the Seminar on the Impact of Culture on Personality. Its goal was to bring at least a dozen social scientists, each representing a different European or Asian contemporary culture, to Yale University. Working together, we would explore how distinct nation national cultures influence different types of personalities. Leading this seminar will be Edward Sapir, an anthropologist at the forefront of the emerging interdisciplinary field called Culture and Personality Studies. Seeking someone to represent contemporary Italy, the Rockefeller Foundation turned to the 
Luigi Einaudi, to the economist Luigi Einaudi, who usually nominated its Italian fellowship recipients, and who was a close friend to the Ferreros, and he nominated Leo. The only other Italian nominated for this fellowship was Renata Calabresi, but since seminar organizers did not plan to include women, she was never considered. Leo's diaries and letters are full of, uh, of observations on American society, culture, and politics, academia, and the methods of sociology, which immediately proved to be very divergent from the European approach. He was also able to reflect on Italian history and culture and on the characteristics of the fascist dictatorship in a context that invited comparison and critical detachment, sharing his observations with his colleagues. Uh, one of the visiting lecturers, uh, the University of Chicago political scientist Harold Laswell, especially appreciated his insights. Uh, Laswell was the editor of, as you know, of psychopathology and politics, and uh, so he, he took part in this in this in these meetings about uh, this, this the subjects. Leo continued to write for various European journals, magazines, and he died in 1933 at the age of 29 while traveling with some friends to New Mexico to attend a meeting organized by Navajo and Pueblo uh, native communities. The case of Tullio Sepilli is an example, is Tullio, I'm going to finish, Tullio Sepilli, this is his mother, is an example of uh, the educational path of the second generation of immigrants. Even as a boy, he wanted to be an anthropologist. He enrolled in the Escola de Sociologia e Politica in the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, one of the most densely populated and multicultural cities in the world, where he had lived since he was a child. At almost 20, he found himself in Modena, as his father had decided to come back to Italy. Tullio was not happy about returning to Italy, everyone white, everything small, and even the anthropology had been deeply influenced and corrupted by fascist ideology. In any case, he became one of the pioneers of modern cultural anthropology in Italy and medical anthropology, contributing to the profound, profound renewal of university studies in, after 1945 in, in, in Italy. A central aspect that we have explored in our research is the influences coming from the family environment. As his mother, Anita Schwarzkopf, she was from Rijeka, from Fiume. She had been educated in a multicultural climate in Nicaragua, and she too devoted herself to anthropological studies, both in Brazil and now, after in Italy. The, the, the last one is Aldomieli. Aldomieli happened to immigrate even before the Russia laws, living in Paris for a decade um, and after in Argentina. He was subjected to um, control by prefects, police of, uh, officers, and consuls everywhere and throughout all his life for his youth, youth socialist uh, militancy and for his declared sexual orientation. A pioneer in the studies of sexology, he had been in contact with uh, Magnus Ischfeld, with the Institute für Sexual Wissenschaft in Berlin, before it was, of course, devastated by the brown shirts. Moreover, he became, Aldo Mieli, an advocate for the history of science in Italy and abroad, initiating a, no, a huge network of international scholars and initiatives, and interpreting the history of science in a broad and interdisciplinary sense, which connected different social, cultural, and intellectual dimensions. 
They are just a few examples of how our research focusing on mobility, on networks, on transnational connections can enrich our view of the history of individual disciplines and their intertwining with cultural and poli political history during the 20th century. So thank you. Um, that's Thank you, Francesca. Uh, for me, the, the project is, uh, is very clear. I, I know Francesca and the Patrizia uh, and the project. So if you have some questions about... Okay. Okay. So it's a very interesting question. And are you uh, this the the the, the, uh, the, the, the the choice to, to, to come back to Italy uh, uh, was linked to more factors. One of them was uh, the fact that, as you know, as you maybe know, in Italy, the, 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 there hasn't been a, 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 purge, a large purge process in, in the universities. So, um, and a, 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 a large process of reintegration of the, 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 the professors and all the, 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 the scholars expelled in 1938. So it was much simpler for full professors to be reintegrated, to came back, and it was much harder to, for non-tenured uh, uh, scholars, for example, young scholars, women, and liberi docenti, there were, there were, there were a, a lot of strange figures in the university, in Italian universities in, at, at that time. So it depended on their the, um, uh, the position before, before uh, uh, immigrating. Um, it depended also on the opportunities they had, for example, in the United States. And they were linked to the disciplines, for example, for uh, physicists, physicists in general don't came back to Italy because they find something in, very important in the United States. It's the case, for example, of uh, Bruno Benedetto Rossi and other physicists. They, they found jobs in a few weeks and they found, they found very interesting positions in, in a few weeks uh, after they arrived to, to New York. It's, it's, it was, uh, uh, in, there was also the, um, a, a familiar factor, a family factor. Sometimes uh, women, um, husbands or wives or um, grandparents 
uh, just to we have to come back to Italy and we have to uh, reconnect with our families. So there was this this kind of um, I would say the, the, uh, intention uh, that changed the, the, the family choices. The, 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 the sons, the child, the children, excuse me, the children in general didn't want to come back to Italy because they, they, uh, they, they it, it's a case for, of Tullio Seppilli. Tullio Seppilli didn't want to come back to Italy, but his father had a, um, he was a professor maybe in anatomy, something like that, in Perugia, so they came back to Italy. And then he started this, this uh, university career, his university career in Italy. Uh, but in general, children wanted to, to stay. Yes. <laughs> professor. Uh, so already, I don't know if you have the, the so it's not the first part. Do the, um, they have different motives for leaving Italy? Uh, at least if you look at the initial position, so young scholars and, uh, and women, uh, do they have another motive to leave Italy than just uh, install professor that were leaving their career? Like it's probably the same starting point, so I'm wondering, um, um, if you have like maybe in their journal and stuff like that with the idea that uh, why obviously you have yes, this yes. background but like the more in depth personal like you can bring some uh, maybe publicity for this uh, motive that led them to, to to go to the states and then the second question do you have like maybe like example of people that came to the United States and didn't find any position maybe stuck the career especially I'm speaking in terms of women obviously but mm -hmm. maybe other for example. So you know that this kind of uh, complexity of relationship between the states, but in Italy, but also at the United States of your life. Yes, it, uh, this is one of the main question and questions in our research project because uh, if you if you read the a lot of memoirs of the the the, 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 the most uh, well known figures, these stories are so happy end stories. So we. We, that there was, uh, I was a professor, after there was fascism, after there were the Russian laws, I had to emigrate, but I found something more, something better than in Italy. But this wasn't the case for a lot of persons, a lot of people, especially women. Uh, I, I want, I'd like to show you this, this case that I, Constructed this, this, this is the case of um, Luisa Levi d'Ancona. It's a very complicated Mirella, Mirella Luisa, a very complicated case. Um, she emigrated uh, so, uh, in 1938. His father and his mother immigrated to the United States. His father died after one, uh, one, one year after. His mother had to restart studying and restart working because she, she wasn't, she had a, a formal qualification. She was a, a very uh, a, a member of a high class family in Italy, so she had a very high education, but she didn't ha have a formal qualification. Uh, after some years, uh, Luisa, Mirena Luisa, uh, decided to immigrate to the United States. And she passed more or less five years uh, doing a, a lot of jobs, different jobs, and after she had the possibility to uh, start, um, to um, apply for a PhD, and after uh, she became 
a very important art historian and uh, iconologist and so on. But she, the, 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 she had to pass through five, six, seven years of non-qualified jobs and in I, um, I reconstructed the stories of a lot of Western uh, students who came from Western Europe, from Poland and so on. They, in general, people, people who came to Italy from Poland, uh, Hungary, uh, they didn't have the possibility to go to the United States uh, because it was much harder for them to uh, obtain a visa and so on. And a lot of them came back to their uh, home countries and a lot of them died during the, 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 the genocide, the, the, the Shoah, the Holocaust. So there, are, there is a very wide range of um, situation and women and young people are uh, People will have a lot of difficulty to find uh, jobs and to restart their careers. Um, uh, Christina, uh, so um, uh, intentions or uh, subjective perception of immigration, making decision, and so on. Uh, okay, there are two main two main um, groups in this database: the anti-fascists and the Jews. And so, and but it's very. And some of them are both anti-fascists and Jews. And you know, what is very interesting is that uh, a lot of them start thinking about immigration during the twenties. Also because a lot of women, for example, also because they, they know, they perceive that Italy is changing and that uh, possibilities to study, to uh, develop their uh, so their skills are uh, uh, becoming uh, uh, even, even more and more uh, uh, difficult. difficult. So there is, um, it's very interesting that uh, a lot of them uh, start thinking, start um, uh, considering the possibility to immigrate during the, the, the 20s, the 30s, and start considering the, the places. So France, uh, Britain, Mandatory Palestine, United States, Canada, and and the, the, the final choice uh, is a link to a, a lot of um, factors, sometimes also uh, unpredictable factors. Sometimes because they have a, a cousin in Canada, so uh, there's a chain, a migration chain, chain that. Works and maybe the case of Renata Calabresi. Renata Calabresi, maybe was the first uh, woman uh, with a doctor degree, not the first uh, one of the first uh, woman with doctor degree in experimental psychology, and uh, in Italy, and she had a position in Rome from Florence. A position libero docente in Roma, but uh, the position was withdrawn uh, in, a, in a day. And she, uh, in New York, she worked, uh, she was uh, uh, applied psychologist in that system, I think. Yes. She changed completely the life. Yes, Renata Calabresi is, is very interesting because she is a, a member of an anti fascist family, a Jewish family. Uh, they are friends, for example, of, of uh, 
some of the main, main figures of anti fascist movement, but it's such as uh, you know, Sandini and uh, Carlo Andrei. So it, 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 it's a very interesting uh, and uh, climate uh, and environment. And she decides to immigrate because everything is closed in, this, in Italy. She decides maybe before 1948. She starts thinking about immigration, of course, before, before 1938, because it's it, it, university uh, positions in Italy were uh, absolutely closed for women at that time. Now, <laughs> not so after 1945. <laughs> and she and she stays. She stays in the United States. Uh, Goes after 1945. She doesn't uh, came back to to it. Other questions? So, okay. See you tomorrow. Thanks.